everybody, I'm Helping Hands, a content creator, loving loves covering strategy games. I'm here joined with Wayward Strategist, and uh, we're <laughs> going to ask a couple of questions today uh, on uh, Tempest Rising. So uh, here's the question number one. Um, the game is heavily inspired by Command & Conquer. How are you going to stand out and not be seen by some who would say it's a clone? So that's a great question. Um, when I first was brought into the project, um, Fred, the game director and uh, CEO of 3D Realms, um, he and I bonded over a mutual appreciation for Command & Conquer, but I've never wanted to create a game that is just an exact derivative of something that already exists. Um, you'll notice, obviously, from the footage that we've already shown, that we kind of wear our inspirations on our sleeves a lot. And uh, we targeted, we did target the original um, reveal to kind of lean into our, our inspirations and our, our roots in classic real-time strategy games like Command & Conquer, Warcraft, and Starcraft. Um, over the next couple of months, um, I'm really excited to be able to show off some of the, the unique things that we're doing with our factions. Um, one thing that we haven't had a chance to show off yet is each faction has a unique resource system um, that's unique to itself that, they, that we're using to help differentiate them from each other. So for instance, the GDF have a resource called Intel that they collect through combat and they spend on unit abilities and units. Now, of course, this is all subject to change. We're still in the middle of all this. Um, but we think that that's going to give the GDF a pretty unique character uh, that they're going to have to go out there and combat their, their enemy to be able to generate Intel to be able to use to do many of the things they're going to want to do. Um, additionally, our, our Dynasty faction they have, they're very power focused. They're very um, focused on, you know, different uses for their their power that they generate from um, from the power plants. One of the, the coolest things I think that the Dynasty can do is they can actually turn off a power plant, converting it from what we call production mode to distribution mode. And in distribution mode, the power plant will actually speed up the production and combat capabilities of nearby structures. And that lets the dynasty, you know, have kind of an oh crap button if they're attacked, or they can kind of go into hyper production mode, but they have to be able to afford the power hit to be able to do that. We've got some additional power related systems that will build on that uh, later on, but we have these, these kind of layered on systems that we think make our game pretty unique. Um, and we're really, gonna, I'm, I'm really excited to be able to show those off. Uh, as they're kind of more ready for prime time over the next couple of months. What's your maybe favorite mechanic or mechanics that are in Tempest Rising? We hinted at one of them at Gamescom uh, with our Riot Medic. We have a system in both single player and multiplayer called Specialists. In single player, Specialists are individual named characters that you perform uh, missions for and you gain access to. Um, you can basically pick which of the specialists you want to recruit and have on your side in throughout the course of the game. Um, and in multiplayer, we didn't want these really cool characters to, to not be present. So they are present in, in multiplayer um, as well, but in a, in a different way. So in single player, it's something you recruit between missions and that you have to like earn their trust before you're able to to use them in combat. Acknowledged. Race roll out. Ready, spinning her up, operator. How long has the game been in development for? Uh, so. The game has been in development for three years. I was brought on in early 2020. Um, so I've been involved for about two. Um, I was involved right at the end of us pitching our vertical slice. And um, here I've been ever since. <laughs> but yeah, since, since uh, about 2019. Are there any unique units that will blow players away? Uh, if we're thinking about Command & Conquer, I always remember the tester troopers from Red Alert 2, which I thought were really cool, cool. 
or um, like the Euro unit, which could brainwash units, things like that. So they're, they're, they are, they always stand out to me as like really cool and, and impressive units. Um, what does Tempest Rising uh, have on offer? The GDF have a unit called the Scrambler. It's a late tier harassment unit. It's tier three. It's um, you get it pretty pretty late on in the game. Um, but it does. It has the ability to become invisible when it's not attacking, um, and it fires very long-range missiles um, at air and ground targets. So it's this phenomenal ambush. It's fast. It's long-ranged, uh, and it can become invisible. They're very very annoying to deal with. Our, actually, our, our playtesters love <laughs> messing with people with the scrambler. It's made of glass. It's made of paper, but uh, it's it's very annoying to deal with. On your command. Unit ready. Artillery standing boy. Unit ready. Unit ready. Training. In terms of like the uh, the effort going in towards the campaign and the multiplayer, is it evenly distributed amongst the dev, dev team, or is it are you guys are like okay, we want to really push out the campaign, make sure that's polished and and, and done, or are you also make have a dedicated side that's like, yo, we want to have a really good multiplayer and have it competitive so that we can, you know, build off of that. What's your, uh, what's the kind of feeling in, in, in the... the um, that? That's a good question. I think at this point, just because it's a lot more uh, effort intensive, it's a lot more manpower intensive, we're putting a big focus on the quality of the single player campaign. Um, we've got cutscenes before and after each mission. We've got the command compound where you're talking to characters face to face that's a lot of dev effort um yeah. you know a lot of work from a lot of people goes into making that look and work the way that it does uh but multiplayer absolutely is very important to us as well just at this phase right now a lot of our effort is focused specifically on um polish and quality for single player Get to work.